Welcome to the sixth and final part of Evaluation Basics for Non-Evaluators. Jen has a pretty good idea of how to address evaluation in her ATE proposal. So her last question is, what will actually happen with regard to evaluation after her project gets funded? Everything we've discussed in this video series has been about what happens before a project gets funded. So if you're like Jen, you may still be wondering what happens after you get your grant. So we'll cover that very briefly. Generally speaking, each year of the project, the evaluation will go through a cycle of data collection, analysis, and reporting, as well as helping the project staff use the evaluation results to make adjustments as needed for the next year of work. In year one, some time needs to be dedicated to planning the evaluation. This will involve establishing a formal agreement between the evaluator and the project's institution. Then the evaluator will work with the project to develop an actionable evaluation plan because the page and a half dedicated to evaluation in the proposal just doesn't have enough detail to really set things in motion. This is also a time to establish a relationship with the college's institutional research office to find out what data they'll be able to provide, how best to work with them, and even to start obtaining baseline data. Most likely some data collection instruments or protocols will need to be developed and tested and that will happen during this planning phase as well. Then after all that, primary data collection can finally begin. The first evaluation report will need to be finished in advance of the project's first annual report to NSF, so that happens pretty quickly. Then the data collection, analysis, and reporting cycle can repeat itself annually with periodic meetings and ongoing communication with the evaluator. To make sure you get a good plan in place for working with your evaluator, use our communication plan checklist for ATE PIs and evaluators. When evaluations fail, it's often due to poor communication or misunderstandings between the evaluator and the project team. This checklist will help you make sure you get your relationship off to a good start. Now all of Jen's burning questions about evaluation have been answered. She's feeling pretty good about moving forward with the evaluation plan for her ATE proposal. I hope you are too. Each of her questions is addressed in a separate video in this six-part series, which you may revisit at any time. Remember to check out the handout that goes with this video series. It includes links to all the resource materials that were referenced in the videos. The handout and all of the videos are available from evaluate.org slash evalbasics. Thanks for your time and good luck with your ATE proposals.